Think of the past as a concert. Every time we access a memory, our brain becomes the conductor for an intricate symphony. It brings out the strings of emotion. It accents the brass of taste and smell. It inundates us with the percussive body that makes up mood and sensation in concert perception. The visual representation becomes an elusive part of the concerto. Light doesn't leave a lasting imprint on the brain. Images are conjured and then distorted. You see, every time we actively remember, we also decide to forget. See, memories are not formed and then maintained. They are formed and then rebuilt, replayed, repurposed each and every time they are accessed. Now, a bad memory, a traumatic memory, well, it breaks the arms of our very own memory conductor, incapacitating the orchestration. The result is a cacophony of misremembered recollection. See, a traumatic event, it has the capacity for recreating itself more intensely every time it is accessed or triggered. In other words, a bad memory doesn't fade with time like the good ones do sound of a loved one's voice, the exact feeling of your grandmother's hands, the language of your ancestors, those fade. But a bad memory, well, it just becomes more present. Now, a protein inhibitor, it allows us to become the conductor for these memory symphonies. In time, perhaps we reinforce the good ones, create a coded vision, and maybe find a way to substitute the bad memories with false ones. Well, is it any different from advertising? Ugh.